It is Wise Guy Wednesday and things are really beginning to heat up. Our mad scientist Matt Sellen is here with another fun-filled physics experiment. Welcome, Matt. Hi. Good morning. So, uh, I thought that we would talk a little bit about energy because I sat in on a lecture by a colleague of mine, Dave Ruzik, who's a professor here in nuclear engineering, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he talked all about the different forms of energy, and I learned a lot of stuff, and I bet people don't know some of this uh, either, and so I thought we could spend a couple of weeks uh, doing this. It's very interesting, actually. And so what I did uh, last week is I asked if people to send me email and name all of the different kinds of energy sources that we have in this country. And uh, the best email I got was from Erin Kirk of Sullivan, and she named the following four things. She said solar energy, wind, nuclear energy, and hydroelectric energy. And I thought those are great answers for two reasons. First of all, those are all things that we use to get energy, <clears throat> but it's interesting that those are all very small things that we use to get energy. It turns out that we get uh, eighty percent of our energy from other stuff okay we get forty percent of all the energy we use in this con country comes from oil and half of that actually uh, goes into running automobiles and the other half into trucks and planes and automobiles and stuff and so I have some oil right here and if you look at this little bottle this is oil that came out of the ground right here in Illinois sometimes when you drive down the highway you see these pumps going right and uh, you'll see that it's, it's, there's oil here and there's some stuff on the bottom, which is water. And so when you pump the oil out of the ground in Illinois, it comes out with salt water mixed with it, which is kind of interesting. And the interesting thing about crude oil is that it doesn't burn that well. I have some in a little dish here. If I just throw a match in there, nothing much happens. If I put it on a Q-tip, however, I can get it to burn pretty good. So crude oil doesn't burn great. It's about a quarter gasoline. So if you have a four gallons of crude you can get about a gallon of gas gas burns really good I have some right here that I'll pour in there and I'll throw a match in there real quick and you'll see that gasoline is very 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 flammable it burns very quickly um, <clears throat> now we also get 20 percent of the energy in this country from coal and I have a whole bunch of coal right here that I got from uh, the Abbott power plant okay and uh, and try to burn this stuff it doesn't burn that easy either so if you go down to the power plant and you try to see how they make this stuff burn you'll see some very interesting machines that heat this stuff onto a big fire where air is blown onto it okay now most of a lot of the electricity about half the electricity in this country comes from burning coal and uh, the last one about 20 percent of our electricity or of our energy comes from natural gas which is what I have coming out here and I'm using this to boil some water because that illustrates what we do with almost a third of all the energy in this country. It's used to boil water, which is then used to drive turbines, the steam is, and we make electricity. Okay, so here's my little electrical generator. So in, instead of my hand turning this, you could have a, a steam-powered turbine. Now, that brings up a question, Robert, that you asked two weeks ago, as I recall. Does water that you boil in a microwave cool faster than water that you boil on a stove? Yeah, that, that question actually came from my sisters who swear up and down that if you make tea or coffee in a microwave, that it cools down much faster than if you make it in like a kettle on the stove. Right, and I did a very careful experiment where I, I heated water both ways, <clears throat> and I monitored the temperature and watched it cool, and it cooled at exactly the same rate. But what I found was that quite often when you heat something in the microwave and you take it out when it's bubbling, it isn't that hot yet. It isn't quite at the boiling point. So it can kind of fool you, I think, into thinking that it's boiling when it's not. And so it starts out being a bit colder. And so that's, that's my theory anyways, and I'm sticking to it. And if you look at my <laughs> web page, you can see my data, actually. And so, this... so if you go to www.uiuc.edu slash tilde wise guy, you'll see that uh, experimental results as well as all the videos from the other weeks. So what it boils down to, if you'll pardon the pun, is operator <laughs> error on the part of my sisters. Well, no, it's not a bad <laughs> No, 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 trust me. It's, it's my sister's fault. Let's not, let's not start a family feud here. <laughs> it's a very good observation because I think if you don't get it as hot to begin with, then it seems to be colder faster. So, okay. Yes, it does. Right. Now, in our next segment, in about 20 minutes, you're going to give us a question for people to answer next week. Oh, absolutely. And, in fact, the question is going to involve watching some things blow up. Okay. So it's, it's, it's audience participation this week. Okay. Ready, ready to take notes. All right. We will tune in for that in about 20 minutes. Thanks, Matt. Well, up next come four.